Hello. So, in this lecture, we are going to continue our discussion of mass transfer in the Taylor flow regime. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the basics of mass transfer, some non-dimensional numbers and uh, uh, the general features of mass transfer in the Taylor flow regime. In this lecture, we will uh, try to use that knowledge to develop some of the models or we will discuss some of the models that have been developed in the literature in last uh, 15, 20 years. Uh, so, we will start with the, the mass transfer for gas liquid transfer. So, for a Taylor bubble as we have discussed several times that one can look at a unit cell and the bubble the best approximation in terms of simplified geometry for the bubble can be the spherical caps and the cylindrical middle portion. So, for gas liquid mass transfer, uh, Van Bathen and Krishna from University of Amsterdam, they considered the mass transfer from gas bubble to the liquid phase and uh, consider the contributions from the bubble caps at the front and rear and the cylindrical middle the film region separately. So, one can write K L A which is the overall gas liquid mass transfer coefficient into the interfacial area that is equal to K L cap into A cap plus K L film into A film. So, first we will consider the contribution from the caps and for simplification for geometrical simplification caps are considered to be hemispherical. The diameter of channel is D and let us say the diameter of the bubble is DB. Now, uh, in our picture of uh, the, the derivation that they did for watch for a rising Taylor bubble in a capillary and then it was validated with uh, extensive CFD models. Mass CFD modeling. So, in the near the Taylor bubble as we have discussed that there is recirculation in the liquid zone. So, the a if the flow is in this direction uh, then the a liquid particle comes on this side and moves and then it goes. So, the recirculation or a liquid particle when it recirculates inside the liquid slug it comes into the contact with the uh, this much length of the bubble. 
similarly on the other side so let us just consider the other side of the bubble on the other side when the so this is bubble is moving in this direction and so when the liquid comes in contact with the bubble interface the cap and then again so in uh, a liquid molecule the entire distance or the the it remains in contact with bubble caps along a distance which is half of bubble cap or uh, or the circumference so uh, the average distance traveled is equal to pi db the entire circumference this side and this side and the half of this will be pi db by 2 and we can assume this that db is equal to dc neglecting the small film thickness so for thin film thickness one can have this db is equal to the channel diameter which is pi d so you write is pi d by 2 now uh, contact time in this case will be so when we have uh, the length is pi db by 2 the contact time theta will be uh, length over distance so pi d by 2 and the velocity of the bubble let us say is u b so the contact time will be pi d by 2 divided by u b now from the penetration theory k l cap h equal to d over pi theta into 2 so that will be equal to 2 root of d by pi pi d by 2 u b or this will be equal to 2 root 2 over pi square root of d capital D u b divided by d 2 root 2 by pi d d u b by d. So, remember this d is molecular diffusivity or mass diffusivity and small diameter is small h small d is channel diameter u v is velocity of the bubble and if it is not known a priori we can take this almost to be equal to u t p ok. Now uh, the other thing we need to know is a cap. So a cap is equal to uh, this will be divided by the cross sectional uh, uh, is divided by the volume of the unit cell so that will be pi by 4 d square l u c and the surface area of uh, two hemispheres together put together will be one hemisphere so that will be pi 
db squared okay so that will eventually be 4 by luc with the assumption that d is almost equal to db so we have calculated uh, the mass transfer coefficient and the interfacial area density for the bubble caps okay now coming to the uh, contribution from the film region so for the film region again uh, one can define kl film is equal to 2 square root of d over pi theta in contact with the film. Now, theta film can be defined as the length of the bubble, theta is contact time. So, contact time for the film can be defined as the length of the bubble, the film region divided by UB. And if we define epsilon G, which is white fraction or gas hold up, it can be defined uh, roughly equal to LB over LUC which will hold good for long bubbles and long unit cell because the volume of the spherical caps can be neglected in that case. So, uh, we can have LB replaced by epsilon G L U C divided by U B. So, that gives us K L film is equal to 2 square root of D over pi and theta film epsilon G L U C and U B. Now, uh, we can write the total contribution. So, that is K L A is equal to K L cap plus uh, K L cap A cap. So, before we do that, we also need to find A film. So, let us write A film now. A film is equal to the volume of the unit cell which will be pi by 4 d squared L u c and the surface area will be pi d L for this uh, cylindrical region. So, that will be pi d B into L B pi and pi will cancel out and that will be db lb 4 divided by d l u c and for the case when db is approximately same as d we can write this as 4 epsilon g lb by l u c can be written as epsilon g so 4 epsilon g and this is d squared so 4 epsilon g over d so that is the uh, kl and al film so we can now write uh, the total contribution which is kla is equal to kl cap into al cap so kl cap is let us go back to 2 root 2 over pi into root d 
u b over d a cap is 4 over l u c plus the contribution from the film is 2 square root d u b divided by epsilon g l u c into 4 epsilon g over d. So, let us just check 2 root d u b upon pi epsilon g l u c. So, we have epsilon g l u c pi into 4 epsilon g over d. Okay. So, we can see from here that in both the cases k l a is proportional to root d u b. So, the overall mass transfer coefficient it is proportional to the square root of diffusivity and it is proportional to the square root of the velocity of the bubble. The constants we have here inside is 8 root 2 over pi into 1 over root d 1 over l u c plus 2 and that will again be 8 root epsilon g divided by root pi. So, that is 4 into 8 epsilon g d u b is already out. So, we will have root pi l u c into 1 over d. So, this is basically function of uh, channel diameter and uh, unit cell length. So, that suggests that the mass count transfer coefficient will be higher for larger channel diameter and it will be uh, also higher for when the unit cell length is shorter. It will also depend on the volume fraction. Uh, now, when they compared this model with the CFD simulations for mass transfer, they had a good agreement or uh, with CFD simulations and also found that mass transfer is dominant in the film region. Okay. Now, when it comes to the rectangular channels, uh, because in microfluidics people not only use circular capillaries, but uh, more and more uh, rectangular or square capillaries. So, in the rectangular channels, Film thickness is not a constant, delta f is not uniform everywhere. And bubble caps are not necessarily hemispherical. So, in their work they further considered uh, 
a simplified model where uh, uh, they considered that cap mass transfer can be neglected and then uh, considered the film contribution only. So uh, KLA in this case will be proportional to a constant C1. So all the constants they were brought together under C1 and then that is equal to D U B by epsilon G L U C 1 over D and U B by epsilon G it can be written as the superficial velocity of gas so uh, this is replaced uh, by a quantity which is known uh, while performing experiments. So it is easier to use uh, in the model. So C1 square root of d u g over l u c into 1 over d and what they found is that c1 from their experiments the comparison with the experiments in circular as well as rectangular capillaries that c1 is one uh, about 4.5 the value from the model in the, from the earlier model it was about 8 divided by root pi which is very close to this value. They suggested that applicability of this model was good during their experiments and uh, give it a criteria that this will be good when uh, UG over UL divided by LB square root of it is greater than 3 or the contact time uh, is less than uh, 0.1 or the Fourier number is less than 0.1. Now uh, while using this uh, model one need to take into account the fact that if the length of the bubbles and slugs are very long then in that case the fill might get saturated uh, and there will be no mass transfer through the film. So in this case the film will remain in inactive uh, uh, player during the mass transfer. So one need to use this model with a caution looking at the length of the bubbles and slugs that are generated uh, for a particular configuration. So now uh, what we have looked at is mass transfer for gas liquid interface looking at the contributions from the bubble cap and contributions from the film region and we said that in the uh, limit of short contact times it is the mass transfer through the interface in the film region which is dominant and we gave the relationships for the two cases uh, based on penetration theory. Uh, now the other region which we need to consider is mass transfer in the liquid solid where uh, uh, the liquid in the slug as well as liquid in the film region may interact with the wall. So this will depend on the basically on the flow behavior in the liquid slug. So as we know that the flow in the liquid slug has internal recirculations, so which has vortices. So it will depend on the intensity of these vortices. And then uh, we have this picture of or uh, this configuration of Taylor bubble that 
on a thin film the bubbles and slug move so it will also depend on this thickness of the liquid film on the wall and uh, the of course the surface area between the liquid and solid phases so in the parameters that we study this will translate to the two phase velocity or utp which is sum of the superficial velocities of gas and liquid the dimension of the channel d length of the slug and diffusivity d okay so uh, one can uh, develop a correlation based on the uh, mass transfer uh, consider the two region where uh, in the liquid slug region there is internal recirculations in the liquid slug and the film region and put them uh, put the two resistances in series so while the mass transfer from the vortex to the film can be considered using the stagnant film model uh, what is uh, what we need to concentrate on or what is to be looked upon is mass transfer from the film to wall so as we have seen in uh, heat transfer uh, during the heat transfer in taylor flow regime that uh, there is an analogy for uh, the flow in the liquid slug with the uh, single phase developing flow in a channel so uh, same will come into play here and we know that in such case the nusselt number or sherwood number for mass transfer this is a function of gradient number where the gradient number is a function of l over d r e s c s c is summit number ratio of uh, mass diffusivity or, or momentum diffusivity by mass diffusivity reynolds number as usual d is the channel diameter okay so there have been a uh, several correlations for defining the uh, or for uh, modeling the behavior in the liquid solid region uh, some of them uh, two of notable of them we present here one is by croeger uh, he gave that the sherwood number is a function of gradient number where the gradient number is defined as l over d r e s c as we seen in the previous slide now uh, it also have two parameters alpha and beta and this alpha these alpha and beta they are uh, weak functions of the non dimensional slug length so uh, we can see that uh, the sherwood number on in this the l is the length of the channel so uh, if the slugs are long so this can be uh, l slug or l channel depending on what one is considering uh, so uh, if the slug is long then uh, this term will go to zero and what we will have is sh is equal to root of alpha square and where alpha because this term uh, will again be very small compared to 1 uh, so we will have uh, sh is equal to alpha which is 40 so the single phase for the same boundary condition the sherwood number for single phase flow is 3.63 and uh, so one can see the one order of magnitude difference the for this developing flow in the liquid slug the sherwood number is about 10 times this is for the only liquid slug so if we consider uh, for the entire unit cell uh 
with 50% white fraction then also this number will be about 20 so which is about 5 times the Sherwood number in a single phase, li single phase liquid uh, flow. So this is again a uh, further high than the single phase uh, liquid flow. So a reason for this has been uh, suggested by Kreutzer that in the liquid slugs what happens that there is recirculation and the Sherwood number is uh, uh, basically a non-dimensional uh, gradient at the wall so that will depend on uh, the concentration difference divided by a length scale uh, from the channel wall to the minimum concentration so this is channel wall to minimum concentration in case of single phase flow the minimum concentration will be at the center and the, so uh, this delta will be radius of the channel whereas in this case the minimum concentration region will be located at the center of this vortex and uh, if you remember from the hydrodynamics that we discussed uh, one can calculate the this distance which is about r over root 2 so if you put that will be about 0.7 r and this is 0.3 r so the distance of the minimum concentration for this uh, delta is uh, about 0.3 r so this distance has decreased for the Taylor flow plus the another factor that contributes here is that the in the single phase flow the liquid at the center it moves forward and it has a high velocity whereas in the Taylor flow the liquid at the center is also brought towards the wall so the residence time of all the fluid elements in this slug are equal whereas the residence time in this case is uh, there is quite a uh, uh, significant distribution of the residence time in single phase flow okay so another correlation that has been given uh, by uh, von bakken and krishna and both of these correlation the one by kreuzer and by krishna they have been developed with a uh, extensive validation with cfd modeling uh, so uh, von bakken and krishna they have uh, given two correlations one for the wall slug region and one for the entire channel so uh, this gives the Sherwood number 2.4 plus 1.5 d over ls and in this case divided by l tube 1 minus epsilon g so where epsilon g is white fraction d over d square ub and for the channel this is uh, Sherwood number 0.5 epsilon g over gz where uh, the graduate number in this case is slightly modified so they have considered a graduate number 1 minus epsilon g l channel or you can consider l u c divided by d Reynolds number and Schmidt number so the difference in this is in terms of that they have multiplied the graduate number with 1 minus epsilon g so considering effectively the length of the slug uh, and they had quite good, good agreement with the CFD results and some of the experimental results. So uh, these are the correlations for uh, mass transfer at the liquid solid wall. So another interesting uh, region where one would need to have models is uh, for say liquid liquid mass transfer but to the best of my knowledge there is no uh, not a very well developed model especially from the fundamental principles there are several models which are based on the uh, uh, fitting to the experimental data or from the dimensional analysis uh, so we are not going to discuss that and I 
request you to look at the literature for those things. In this lecture, what we have essentially looked at uh, uh, two models uh, for the uh, one for the gas liquid mass transfer for Taylor bubble at the interface where we have considered the contributions from the cap and contributions from the film region. Now, if the bubbles are long and their contact times are large, then the film might get saturated and it may become inactive. However, when the contact time is short, it has been observed and the model has been developed for such case that the, uh, the mass transfer from the film region is the dominant one. It will depend on the length of the bubble and the length of the slug. So, a picture one can imagine that uh, when the bubble is in contact with the film, the film gets saturated with the gas and when the slug comes by, this uh, mixing happens between the film and the slug. Now, the other uh, model that we have looked at uh, is uh, mass transfer between the liquid and solid wall. So, one can have a series model there that there are two uh, different regions, one is mass transfer from the recirculating slug to the film in contact with the wall and the other is mass transfer from wall uh, film between the film and the wall. So, uh, for the mass transfer between the film and wall one can use the stagnant film model where uh, K L B uh, will be equal to capital D over delta the film thickness and for the slug region there are two models that have been proposed by uh, uh, Kroeger and uh, Professor Krishnaj group and uh, both these model are based on the developing uh, mass transfer uh, in single phase flow regime with some modifications to those uh, correlations. So, that is all for this mm, lecture. Thank you.